Hey, my lovely people, welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are doing absolutely fantastic and well. Today, I went through my entire collection and I wanted to pick out the most unique and kind of beast mode fragrances. These fragrances all have this unique quality that I feel like they cannot be duped. Um, you know, 2024, there's a lot of dupes out there for our favorite fragrances. And I honestly don't mind dupes because not everyone has the same budget, financial situation. There are people that want to smell good. They want to smell unique, but they aren't trying to spend three, $400 on a perfume bottle. And that is totally reasonable. But I feel like some fragrances, just no matter what, they can't be duped perfectly. They just can't. They have this unique touch that resonates with you. So I'm going to go through all of these fragrances real quickly and I will link them all down in the description box and pin them to the comment section. If you want to shop, please shop my links. I do get a small commission, which helps this channel stay alive. So we're going to jump into this, but before we do, if you're new, subscribe to the channel. Okay. A lot of you guys watch the videos and are not subscribing. Time to subscribe. Leave a comment down below and let me know what is your most unique fragrance that you feel like can never ever be duped. I'm gonna go ahead and start off with MFK's Oud Satin Mood. This fragrance is the epitome of a oud and rose scent. It is truly refined, very smooth and sensual, and it has this like beast mode that you've never seen before. This fragrance will literally stay on you for days and days and days. Like your clothes is going to smell like this. It's very potent, so I never overspray. And it has the most gorgeous dry down. It's like smooth and lavish and it just envelops you. This definitely has like a very intoxicating scent bubble. Now, mind you, if you're not used to Oud, definitely sample this one before you get a full size bottle because the Oud in here, is very potent. You're definitely going to get it. It comes off a little animalic in the opening. As it dries down, I feel like it smooths out and becomes a little bit more mellow and I get more of the other notes, like the floral notes on my skin. But this is definitely a unisex fragrance, but there is this like very alluring sweetness to this fragrance that just, oh, I feel like on a woman smells incredible. My husband has worn this. I have worn this. I don't wear as much as he does, but this is the kind of fragrance that I want to wear for special occasions. Like it has to be a special occasion because this is not a casual scent to me at all. Next fragrance that I have is one that gets mixed reviews. Some people love it. Some people hate it. And that is Fenty Parfum by Rihanna. This scent, when I originally tried out, I really didn't like it. I felt like it was something off about it that just wasn't vibing with my skin. But over time, I have grown to love it that I got myself a full size bottle. Like my original bottle, I got rid of it. And then I'm like, let me try it out. And I really, really love this scent and find it so unique. And that's why I feel like it's not for everyone. A ton of these fragrances are not going to be for everyone. They definitely have this particular scent to them that is going to be for that perfect person. This smells like a fruity floral scent. I do get this kind of woody aspect to it in the dry down. I get a lot of blueberry and tangerine in the opening. It's like a burst of fresh air, but still sweet. It's still sweet, right? And then you get these beautiful floral tones in here. I believe there's like magnolia also that adds to the creaminess. And to me, it smells very feminine, very sensual and grown. This is a grown scent. I don't find this is very juvenile or for every age. It is grown and sophisticated and a little sexy and it smells like a woman. It truly does. I love the dry down of this one, but I also love the opening because that brightness that you get from the fruity tones are really, really beautiful and really awakens your senses. But then it goes down more to the floral notes and the deeper notes. And I still find that this is very captivating. I get this beautiful sweetness from the floral tones on my skin. And I have just been loving this scent on its own, but also layered with so many other fragrances. I actually did an entire video over on my Instagram. Check it out there where I provide you guys with some layering combos. I'm going to bring that to YouTube. I promise you guys, I know some of you guys left the comment when I mentioned it before. I will be doing that video and I will let you guys know what this layers with. It layers with 
so many fragrances. You're going to be so shocked when you actually try it out for yourself. But this is a very unique rose scent, very fruity also, and just particular. It's a very, very particular, but I like it. I say, get yourself a sample, try it on the skin and see how you vibe with it. But I have really grown to love this one. Next fragrance is one that I feel like I talk about way too often now, but I'm gonna mention it again because it's definitely unique. Again, you're either gonna love it or you're going to hate it. This is Amouage Guidance, and the internet went crazy for it. First of all, when you look at the bottle, you really want this fragrance. It's just so aesthetically pleasing. It's beautiful, it's feminine. The color layout is just chef's kiss, and then, the scent okay this is a very unusual fragrance it smells floral but very fluffy and cloud-like but there is a bit of spicy greenness that I get on my skin and a bit of a powdery tone it's so different I don't have anything in my collection that can come close to this fragrance it's very very different but I really like it. And best of all, I love the reactions that I get with this fragrance. It's like, it, I don't know if it comes off differently on other people, but I get compliments, like no matter where I am, I could be going to brunch, I could be walking down the street and someone will say, what is that smell? What do you have on? It smells so good. To me, when I smell this fragrance, it smells very feminine. Like it smells like a woman I get this like creamy, almost leaning lactonic vibe to this fragrance, luscious floral petals, and the spiciness in the scent also. I just think that this is truly what niche fragrance is all about. It's stepping out of the box. You know what I mean? Like really pushing the boundaries and creating something unique, something that you've never smelled before because there are fragrance launches, I feel like every other week and fragrances are starting to smell the same. So I love that Amouage and Fragrance Dubois and Gersoff, fragrances, brands like that really try to push and step outside of the box and they're not launching fragrances every other day. They are really taking their time to create something unique and just beautiful. And this is definitely one that I love. I have layered it with other fragrances too. I like to layer it with soft florals, not super fresh musky florals, but more on the sweeter side. I've also layered it with gourmand scents like Vanilla Sex from Tom Ford, and they layered really nicely, but this is definitely one that's gonna be the most prominent. I feel like this is a beast fragrance, even though, okay, it is very gentle. Like, I feel like you can never be overwhelmed by this scent, but it's beast mode. Does that make sense? It's, it's really weird the way that this performs. I love it. I love it. And I think it's very unique. You can get yourself a sample on Twisted Lily. Go ahead and feel free to use my code Korean 10 to get 10% off. I will link it down below, but this is one that you absolutely want a sample. I don't think it's a safe blind buy. In fact, none of these are probably a safe blind buy. So sample 2024, I'm going to be doing a lot of sampling before getting full size bottles for sure. But this is one that I am so captivated by. I love Fragrance Dubois. I think that they create beautiful fragrances. The presentation, the juice, everything just goes hand in hand. I do, a I do have a video coming up with all my collection from Fragrance Dubois because I have a huge collection of Fragrance Dubois. And this is Milano. I adore this fragrance. I actually have two bottles of it. I feel like this is the most unique scent from Fragrance Dubois simply because it's like a mix of both worlds. It smells feminine, but then it has this very masculine vibe to it. It smells modern, uh, like very fashionista and Oh, I just love it and I've never smelled anything like it. There is like smokiness and leatheriness, but then there's like freshness to the scent. It is like, like every category of like fragrance that you can think of is in the scent, except for gourmand. I don't find it leans that gourmand, but it's a little bit woody. To me, it's a little bit floral. It's a little bit fresh, a little bit musky, a little bit smoky, a little bit leathery, warm, like ambery. It is just one of my favorites from the house. And I love that atomizer. Everything about this fragrance is beautiful. 
oh, you open this up and you definitely get a lot of the smoky vibe, but there is like this freshness in the background. And then I get this leathery tone to it too. It smells very confident, like a very confident girl that always knows how to dress. And you love to layer your clothes with different textures, especially leather. I get a lot of leather tones. You're not a very colorful girly girl. You love your neutral tones, specifically black. And that is the vibe that I get. Like you're very well put together, but in an edgy way, like this fragrance gives me edgy vibes. I Oh, I love this one. I love to wear it during the day or during the evening. And it's just one of those fragrances that I can go to and I enjoy it very much. I have mixed it with Kaoli Vanilla 28 to give it a little bit more sweetness and it performed beautifully with that. But honestly, it is, it's, it's very unique. It is one that I can't you know, get out of all of my collection. This is like a standalone fragrance for sure. And honestly, when I look at the entire collection from Fragrance Du Bois that I have, they're all quite unique in themselves, but this one stands out to me a little bit more. And that's why I have two bottles and it's unisex. So my husband has worn this one, but he prefers it more on me. And I just, I adore the quality of Fragrance Du Bois. The next fragrance that I have is one that I was so excited to get into my collection. I had been wanting it for forever. I've heard Demi Rollins talk about it time and time again. The bottle is absolutely exquisite. And this is another favorite niche house that I think the quality is just impeccable. And I love that a lot of their fragrances are actually very wearable. They're not overly complex. This is Apollonia from Zerjov. Zerjov. I always get it wrong. I'm really trying to pronounce it correctly, guys. But this is X. Wizard, okay? It's a musky powdery iris scent and it's very different from all of my other kind of musky scents. For sure, for sure, for sure. I own a ton of fragrances that have that musky dry down. This performs really differently than those. <sighs> it's like a breath of fresh air. Mm, it opens up citrusy and bright and then it dries down to this very clean, musky scent. And I get a bit of this iris tone in there. I believe there is iris in here, if I'm not mistaken. The iris almost gives it like a bit of a leathery tone also. That's just me. And I feel like this is probably the heaviest musky scent that I have in my collection. One of the top fives, I will say, because there are a few that I have in my collection. And if you guys want me to do a video dedicated on musky fragrances, please comment down below because those are my go-to for summertime. I love a good musky floral. It's just like so elegant and I love them for events too. So this one is very beautiful, very captivating, and the bottle is just exquisite. I love their bottles so much. I think that it's just well presented. It's very unique. It's not overly unique to the point that it looks uh, cheap. It still looks very classy and rich and it has a lot of weight to it. So you know there is quite a bit of quality to it. And I just love, love the presentation. Again, the scent to me is different in a way where I get the muskiness, like that white kind of musky tone, but I also get this like slightly powdery, iris sort of leathery vibe to this fragrance. It's very different. It's kind of sharp also on my skin, but in the dry down, it's a little bit more mellowed out with that kind of like sharpness that I get in the opening. And it's very bright in the opening, not so much in the dry down. And what makes this one stand out as opposed to my other musky scents is just that combination, that concoction of different elements of this musky tone fragrance that I don't get in other fragrances. It's just so beautiful. This smells very, very rich to me. Like it smells very put together, very classy, kind of old school money vibes for me. It's very clean girl aesthetics, hair pulled back, minimal makeup. That's the kind of vibe that I get with this fragrance. It's very clean and very well rounded. It makes for a gorgeous signature scent for sure, because this scent you could probably wear all year round to all occasions. It's just that girl, you know, you can 
grab it, you can wear it and you feel really put together, really lavish. It kind of reminds me a little bit of Le Labo Another 13, but in that one, I don't get any like leathery iris tone, but it has a very similar vibe. And so if you don't want to splurge on this one, I would definitely recommend Another 13. Well, they're both quite pricey, so I'm not, I'm not even helping right here. <laughs> but they do have that similar vibe and I just love this. This is beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. It's not sweet. It's definitely a true musky scent. I'll, I'll, I'll emphasize on that and it's very unisex. So a man can wear this and smell absolutely handsome and a woman can wear this and smell ever so elegant. So staying to the leathery iris kind of vibe, I am going to talk about Maison Crivelli's Iris Malacan. This fragrance is very unique. The iris in here gives me like a chocolatey vibe and there's a leathery tones in here also. And it's just the most potent, elegant, unique fragrance from the brand. Like the brand does have quite a bit of gorgeous scents that are very much heavy hitters. Like I do find they create beast mode fragrances that truly last for days on your clothes and all kind of hours on your skin. And this is no different. If you love a good iris scent, the kind of leans like almost chocolatey. That's what I get from this one. You are going to adore this one. I cannot overspray it because I will get a headache. There's something in iris and leather that when they are combined, I will get a headache if I overspray. Same with Apollonia. I do not overspray this one at all. Um, Milano's, uh, even this one here, I don't overspray. I think it's more the leather that gives me a little bit of a headache. So this a little goes a long way. My bottle is still full. And this is the kind of fragrance that like I need an occasion. I cannot wear this one casual. I don't know what it is. It smells very, very elevated to me. And so when I wear it casual, it just doesn't make sense in my head to my senses. And I need to have an occasion to wear this. I need to get dressed. I need my hair done. I need my makeup done and I'm going somewhere then I could wear this fragrance, but is it unusual? Is it unique? Absolutely. The quality of this fragrance is impressive. It's so smooth and well-rounded. And I love when fragrances are so blended that all the notes just make sense together and they create this beautiful scent bubble. You're not picking up every single note all of the time. It's just blended really, really well. This is very sophisticated. Okay. Super, super sophisticated. If that is your vibe, you might really love this one. If you love very much beast mode fragrances, you are going to be blown away. The opening, I definitely get that spiciness. I get a little bit of smokiness. The leather hits you right away. And I get this chocolatey aspect more in the opening than the dry down, I'll be honest. The leathery note is right there in the forefront. Like you're gonna get a lot of it, but there's something in the dry down and kind of like slightly in the background that gives you a bit of sweetness to this fragrance, making it more wearable in my opinion. That leathery tone subsides a little bit. You get more of the iris that's coming up. And so it's not heavy, heavy, heavy leather throughout the entire wear. This is the kind of fragrance that is not linear. As a matter of fact, majority of these fragrances are not linear. They definitely develop. They're definitely true niche fragrances. So if that's your vibe and you like something a little bit more complex, this is a great selection of fragrances. Oh, I love the dry down. I'm going to keep this out and put it on my vanity to wear more because the dry down is really captivating. It's really beautiful. And this is a type of fragrance now that I'm smelling it that would layer beautifully with chocolatey scents, more gourmand fragrances. I think this would just add some depth to it. Think of like Montal Chocolate Greedy. I feel like it would layer perfectly or even Prada Candy Night. I totally see them layering beautifully with this scent. So I'm going to keep this out. I am going to wear it throughout December because I really want to see more of a dent in here. I'm going to get my husband to wear it. We actually have a party this coming weekend. Maybe I'll wear this one. We shall see. I do like to smell a little bit more feminine when I go to like these kind of events, but this smells 
really delicious. I love a good vanilla fragrance, but I also adore vanilla fragrances that are unique. This one is a little bit more outside of my comfort zone. It's definitely one that took me back that I wasn't expecting to smell like this. Just based off of the reviews, there was a time when it was very, very hyped up. I don't hear a ton of people talking about it as much anymore, but I was shockingly surprised by the scent that I got from this one. And I am talking about, I'm gonna shake up the bottle and you guys will see why, Loon Feline from Atelier des Ors. I'm probably butchering the heck out of this. First of all, this bottle and the way that they have these specks of like gold in there is perfection. It's just so beautiful and mesmerizing when you look at this. It just looks so elegant and it looks beautiful on the vanity. Like this is a bottle you want out all the time. I love the color of the juice, the black, the shape of the bottle, everything is so beautiful. Now this particular fragrance is not your typical, I said typical twice, vanilla scent. It is not, okay? You're not gonna get a gourmand vanilla. You're not gonna get a true sugary vanilla, a vanilla extract. You are gonna get the most herbally vanilla scent. It's green, it's herbally in the sense of like, almost like a green tea. And then you get that beautiful vanilla in the dry down. It is very different and quite complex. So this is one you absolutely need to sample. And the type of fragrance that is more for the seasoned nose. What do I mean by that? I mean fragrance lovers that have ventured outside of designer fragrances. They have gone to more true niche fragrances that smell really outside of the box. This is the one that you want to try if that's the direction you want to go into with your fragrance journey. I'm going to spray it on the skin because I really get more of the gist of the skin. Now when you spray Spray this fragrance, you will get a little bit of the specks of glitter on your skin. So don't spray this directly on your clothes because that will happen, okay? Ooh. The opening is like a little smoky and then there's this very pungent herbally touch to it. Like very green herbally touch. Like I get, I get like a green tea, a matcha type of vibe in the opening. As it dries down that vanilla, it's very warm and kind of ambery and resinous starts to develop and starts to come to the forefront. Now that herbally tone still stays there. It doesn't go away right away, but I get more of the vanilla over time. As it dries down and dries down, you will get more of that sweet, warm, sort of ambery vanilla. This is a very warm scent. So perfect for winter time. Okay. If you live in a cold climate, this is the kind of fragrance you want. It's a vanilla. That's not your typical vanilla. It's going to smell really different and really unique. Not everyone's going to be walking around smelling like this, but it is so sophisticated. It is one that I even needed to get used to. And I don't grab it that often because it's very different. And so I kind of forget about her, but it is unique, like super unique. If you're tired of hearing about the same vanilla fragrances, this is not the same at all as what's out there right now, okay? And this has been around for a while. Mmm, I love that the vanilla just gets stronger and stronger and warmer. So it's a beautiful scent. Do not be afraid when I said the herbal vibe, the tea, the green tea, the matcha, you definitely get more of that in the opening versus the dry down. The dry down is more vanillic. It's very warm and sort of cozy also and just beautiful, like the scent bubble is really beautiful. It's very like smooth and it kind of gives you a warm hug. That's the type of vibe that you're gonna get from this fragrance. It's beautiful. I think that it's very unique. And you know what? I'm going to keep this one out too, because I wanna get more wear out of it. We are in full blown winter here in Canada, so I might as well pull out my winter fragrances. Next fragrance that I have to talk about is one that I don't hear a ton of people talking about at all. All. And this is a very unique fragrance and it is from Prada. It's part of their private collection. It's called Amand and this is like an almond fragrance, a bitter almond fragrance to be specific. This fragrance is unique to me because I don't have any almond fragrances that smell like this one. It is 
cold. Like, does that make sense? Like this fragrance smells cold, but at the same time, you could totally wear this during the winter time. It has this very clean vibe to it, but also this like nutty aspect with that bitter almond. It is the most unique fragrance that I've ever smelled from the House of Prada. And I really want to try more from their private collection. The bottle is absolutely spectacular. I just love how there's this beautiful like textured vibe here. And the cap also is textured, this embellishment in the front. I think it's so unique and beautiful. And I believe with every bottle, there's a different color to it depending on the prominent note, this one being almond. And I totally get why there is blue because this is a very like cold scent. And even though you can wear it during the winter, you can also wear it during the summer. It's not overly sweet. It's not cloying. It's just one of those fragrances that kind of goes with any occasions. I'm going to spray it right over here because I haven't smelled it in such a long time. Opens up very bright and citrusy, like almost like there's lemon in here. It's very zesty. Instantly, you're going to get the bitter almond. It's not creamy. It's not cherry-like to me. It's this bitter, true, nutty almond tone in this fragrance. Oh my gosh, it's just so beautiful. You do get a little bit of like a cherry aspect in the dry down, like a tiny little bit, but mainly you are going to notice that this is almond for sure. You're not going to mistake it for like a cherry fragrance whatsoever. It's very nutty and slightly creamy in the dry down. I am so like blown away that no one talks about this fragrance. I do not hear a ton of people talking about it, but I think Many of you guys that love a unique scent are going to enjoy this one for sure because it's quite different. It's very, very different. I don't have too much to say about it. It's very simple. It's not an overly complex or developing fragrance, to be honest, but the dry down is unique. Just the whole aspect and the whole philosophy of this fragrance is very unique. So I had to, had to mention it and I hope it's not discontinued. I don't think it is. I pretty sure it's still available and I will link it down below if I can find it. But if you love almond fragrances that are not like super leaning gourmand, like overly sweet, you are going to enjoy this one for sure. Of course, I could not do this video without mentioning the ever so popular Delina. I just know that this is one of the most unique rose fragrances in my collection for sure. Delina is one of a kind. I know it's been duped and many, many people have this fragrance because it's become mainstream, but I really do feel like with every fragrance that you wear, you, you, your personality, the way that you wear it makes it unique. So Delina, one person could be wearing it and no one will notice. And then the other person could be wearing it and everyone will notice. So always keep that in mind when you are buying fragrances. Do not feel like, oh my God, now I can't wear this one because everyone wears it. I don't believe in that at all. If I bought it, I'm gonna wear it, okay? And the Lena is the perfect niche rose fragrance to me. It has so many different facets to it and it just smells very, very unique. You get the rose, yes you do, but you also get this incense, you get the rhubarb, you get the lychee, it's slightly smoky, it's slightly woody, it's tardy, it's a bit spicy, but it's also creamy and very luxurious and quite feminine. Like, oh my goodness, this fragrance is a work of art in my opinion. It is absolutely divine. The performance and the way that people react to the scent is actually mind-blowing. No matter where I am, I am going to get complimented. Not just a question, complimented on this fragrance. This is definitely one that people love to smell on other people. And it's one that so many different age groups can wear this. Like I love this fragrance. My mom loves this fragrance. My sister loves this fragrance. So it's one that like resonates with so many different people. And it's because there's so much going on. It is a complex fragrance, but at the same time, it's extremely wearable in my opinion. I am obsessed. This was my first niche fragrance and I was literally blown away. I smelt that and I was like, what, where have you been all my life? Because I cannot live without a bottle of Delina in my life. It smells that good. And when my mom came to visit after I purchased this one for myself, she absolutely had to leave with a bottle. So I did give her a bottle and she loves the cereal. She says that it is the best, like it's, it's top tier and it just lasts on you for hours and hours and hours. It has the biggest scent trail and 
everyone can smell this fragrance and you don't even need to overspray it. And even though it's beast mode, it's not overwhelming. It's one of those fragrances that is beast mode, but not, oh, oh my God, you're doing too much. It just smells so good. No matter how many people start wearing Delina, I will always wear Delina. I will make her be unique to me. And my favorite layering combo with Delina is Love Don't Be Shy from Killian. Those two together, even Delina exclusive, go hand in hand. They smell incredibly good together. So if you haven't tried my signature layering combo, please go ahead and try it out because you will truly be blown away. So guys, that is it for this video. I wanted to do a top 10, so I'm stopping at 10. If you wanna see a part two, definitely let me know because I could definitely pull out another 10 fragrances that I think are so unique that you absolutely need to get your nose on. Remember, you don't have to go out and get a full size bottle right away. Sample, sample, sample. You could go on Twisted Lily, use my code to sample, you get 10% off, or there are a bunch of other websites that you can definitely do that. I will be linking everything in the description box as always and pinning it to the comment section. So if you need to check out these fragrances and all of my codes, check it out there. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you heard something new and cool today. Leave a comment down below, like this video, don't forget to share and subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Ciao!